Pinky, thanks for joining. Um, ah, okay. So uh, Mickey asks, is it good to be proactive and create statistics on the second or third fields in an index? So um, for other folks, if let's say I've got a non-clustered index and the non-clustered index is on columns A, B, C, and the key, right? So everything's sorted first by A and then by B and C. SQL Server, when I create this index, will automatically create, and this is just reviewing what Mickey already knows. <laughs> SQL Server will automatically create a statistic along with this index for me, an index stat. But that index stat isn't as perfect as we would like to think. The index stat will have this density vector, and the density vector is just this really small little part of the stat that's like, well, uh, the combination of these columns, like what's the statistical likelihood they're related, but it's just this really small estimate. It isn't any detail. There's a histogram about the statistic that describes sort of more detail about how many rows are for different values. However, the histogram is only specific to the first column in the index. So a multi-column statistic is still mostly just information about the first column in the index. So Mickey is asking, for these second columns, should I create column stats for them? Um, I would not, simply because SQL Server is really good about creating them itself, as long as you have the default auto-create statistics setting on in the database. If it wants to, it, it will create those single column stats for B and C. I haven't come across a case where it didn't create them um, when it could find them useful. So like if you're joining it all on B or C, you're doing a predicate or a group by on them, it'll just create them. And it's I've never needed to create them manually. So it's, it is, it can be useful to have those stats for sure. The auto create is really eager. <laughs> One other question that's related to this is, what if I have duplicate stats? What if I already had, before I created this index, what if I already had a stat on column A? Like, you know, it had auto-created a column stat on column A, and then I create this index uh, that, that has column A. Technically, I have an index stat, and I have a column stat. Is that a problem? I haven't ever actually run into it being a problem. Like I've never had to delete the old column stat. Technically they can be updated differently. Like one of the, one of them could be fresher than the other, which can be a little weird where you're like, oh, well I do. So if you really want to delete the column stat, the auto updated column stat, you can't delete the index stat without deleting the index. You can, and of course it would auto create it again if it needed to. Um, but I've never actually run into that being a problem, but it is technically you can have like an auto created column stat and then you create an index stat and like accidentally you have duplicates now. <laughs> so I have a comment from Richie. You have flowers on your door. You should get a gardener to fix that. Richie, um, I am lucky that these flowers are not actually dead. So <laughs> I should get a gardener because I cannot keep any flowers alive at all, ever. All right, we have reached nine o'clock Pacific my time and I'm gonna go run out and get the house cleaned up and pick up my folks uh, who are visiting in town, which is wonderful. And they probably won't have a lot of questions or comments about stats. Oh, oh, I got more, I got a couple more uh, questions. Um, oh, um, a question from, I think Eric. The UI is a little unclear about exactly who asked a question. <laughs> so I think this is Eric's question. I am seeing a ton of WA underscore statistics, are they useful or should they be dropped? So I'm gonna go back to screen share real fast. And I actually have a screenshot of this in this post. At the top of this post, here is a little screenshot of what statistics look like on the table. So here's what Eric's talking about, these underscore WA statistics. 
The ones that are highlighted here, these underscore WA statistics, these are automatically created column statistics. Eric has noticed that the SQL Server team named these in a really intuitive way. Not really. When it auto creates column statistics, it uses underscore WA. Now, apparently, the legend is, and this legend comes from Paul Randall. He, he does say it's based in fact. Um, but I think this story is too ridiculous. Um, apparently, uh, this stands for the state of Washington. All of your statistics, no matter your localization, they are all born in the state of Washington, which is where Seattle is, which is where Redmond is, which is where the SQL Server team originated. <laughs> and then underscore sys. Wouldn't it have made more sense to start them with sys? You know, but those are auto-created column statistics. Um, you do not need to drop those. It is creating those because it wants to have those little estimates there um, to help it uh, take care of things. All right, question from Greg. I can't resist the questions, guys. What effect does the setting uh, create statistics asynchronously have? Uh, so the setting is update stats asynchronously. Um, and what that setting says is, okay, so statistics update, the auto kind is actually triggered not when data changes. And this is not super intuitive, but it's actually a good thing. So let's say I change a bunch of data in a table. Like we, I have a stat on column A, a column, let's get rid of the index, we're dropping our index. We've dropped our index. We have a column statistic on column A. And, um, 20% of the, you know, 30% of the rows in the table change. We insert 30% more rows. The statistics are technically not valid anymore, but the statistics don't update just when we insert the rows. It's only when a query comes and is saying, I want all the rows where A equals 10. You know, I want to optimize a query, estimate for me how many rows have the, you know, have 10 for A. At that point, if the statistics are invalid, it will say, okay, we need to update those stats as long as you have auto update stats enabled. The async setting says, should I optimize this query without waiting or not? So if you have auto update stats async turned on, it'll say, oh, those stats aren't fresh enough for me, but I don't care. I'm gonna use the stats that aren't fresh. I'm gonna optimize me and then go uh, update them after me for everyone else. That is, if you're okay with this query, optimizing on stats that aren't fresh, meaning we could get a really bad plan for this guy, then async can be all right. Usually the wait for stats to update is really fast. Even on these large tables, if they're updating with the default sampling, I'm throwing my stuff around. If they're updating with the default sampling, usually it's fine to wait. Like in an OLTP system, I've never had that wait be longer than like a very small amount of milliseconds. I've never sat there and watched a query wait for it. So usually sync is fine. Async means this guy is like, who cares? I'm optimizing. Yeah. So weird. A weird little setting. There was one memory leak that was associated with having auto update stats async on way back in SQL 2008. Um, but that, oh, James has an interesting, James has an interesting question. I've got stats that start with WA underscore sys that are showing as user created, not auto created. How did that happen? causing problem with an upgrade. So I'll show you how James is detecting this. James, this is weird. Um, <laughs> but I believe you, I'm just saying it's weird. You can check if a statistic is auto-created or not just by looking at the sys.stats table. So James is saying, I've got these stats that have a name like wa underscore sys, but see how in my things, I'm, I'm guessing, James, that they say auto created is zero and user created is one. Yeah, he says they're showing as user created, not auto created. Now, someone could manually run a create statistics command. I, I'm guessing, um, James, my guess is that someone like scripted out a lot of stats 
possibly by using like the script database task or something like that. And then they applied them. So there is like, if you go into like script database, there's an option to like script out all the statistics in the database. If you do that and then you run that, you know, like say I script out all the stats against the dev database, you could run that against the production database and end up with something like what you're seeing. And then if it's caught, he's saying it's causing problems with an upgrade because it probably wants to alter those columns and it can't because there's a user created stat on it. Yeah, I would drop those stats that are user created with those names. I would check and make sure, hey, is the auto create stats property enabled on the database so that if it, you know, after the upgrade, if there's missing column stats, it'll just automatically create them. Um, so I would be more, I would only be hesitant about dropping them if auto create stats was off on the database for some reason. And then I would be like, do we really need to have this off? You know, what's, what's up with that? That is, that is an interesting one, but I bet that, I bet that's how that happened with the script database, script stats task. All right, folks. Thanks so much for attending. This was really, really fun. I think I am, so I was using this as kind of a test. Do I want to do more Hangouts on air in the future? Um, it was really fun. I think so. I think um, more and more of these. If you yourself want to do a Hangout on air for a SQL Server topic, shoot, I can give you some tips. Uh, shoot me an email and let me know, and I'll tell you everything I've learned. <laughs> so thanks, folks, for joining me. Have a great Monday and a great week.